Oh dear. And we will go to Matthew chapter 5. I didn't even think of it. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> Long known passage here, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we won't read through the whole Sermon on the Mount. If not least, because there's so much good stuff in it that it will lead to a bunch of talks. <coughs> so we'll just read, starting in verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And there's a lot we could pull out of that, which we won't right now. I will highlight, though, that um, I think about on uh, a week ago, we mentioned, no, a couple of weeks ago, or it must have been on a Wednesday, the Spirit of the Lord is now upon me. All right? And, and, the, and the Lord Jesus very early said that the Spirit of the Lord is now upon me to heal the brokenhearted and all of these kind of things. And lo and behold, we're reading about those same kind of things in the blessings here. Okay, when he's talking about healing and being delivered and everything like that, here he's saying, blessed, these are the blessings that the people, the people will receive. So the people that Jesus came to save that the Spirit was on him to save through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, these are the people that are poor in spirit and they mourn, they're meek, <clears throat> they hunger and thirst for righteousness, and they're merciful. And all of those things that Jesus was anointed to do is their inheritance. But what I particularly wanted to focus on was verse 6 here. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, <clears throat> for they shall be filled. We're going to go to John chapter 4. <clears throat> when we think of the necessities of life, um, we usually kind of group food and drink together, okay, because they're related. They're not the same thing, okay, and the body doesn't necessarily deal with them the same way, okay, but we, we tend to group them together, food and drink. There's like a, and, and it's true that you, you kind of, you, you need both, all right? And, and here we've had them split together by the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And here we are in John chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 31. We're not going to read through the whole story. This is the woman at the well. Uh, Jesus had just spoken to the woman at the well. You've got all of those amazing verses where he talks about her, her private circumstances that he shouldn't be aware of to grab her attention and, you know, shuts down a debate about a stupid religious issue and talks about how God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, and all this amazing stuff. And he, he, he also did a thing which was unusual in that he very directly identified who he was. Okay, and he didn't often go around and blankly say that he was the Messiah. Okay, but he did to this lady. And she ran off and, and, and she was excited and she went to the people in the town saying, you, you need to listen to this guy. But while, uh, while she was running off and grab, grabbing all the people, <coughs> uh, the disciples who wanted off to get some food came back to him. In verse 31, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. 
And therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him all to eat? And Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not that there are yet four months and so on and such forth. My meat is to do the will of him who sent me. And if you are hungry for righteousness, you are hungry to do the will of the Lord of God. The Lord of God. The Lord God. Let's, let's just say that. The Lord God. All right? Okay? You're, you're hungry to do his will. And you can't unless you are also filled with what the water is about. Let's go to John chapter 7 so that I can explain what I mean. <clears throat> John chapter 7 makes it very clear here. Uh, we'll start in verse 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And so when we read, that those that are blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Okay? Thirsty for righteousness means that we will be filled with the water, the, the living water, which is the Holy Spirit. And it is only once we are filled that we can do the will of the Father. Because it's the will of the Father that we start our relationship with him by receiving the Holy Spirit. Okay, until we receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we don't have a relationship with him and we can't do his will. And hence, we need to hunger and thirst. We need to hunger to do his will and we need to thirst be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 2. You may, have, you may have heard these verses before. <clears throat> but I think it's interesting. Well, we'll, we'll read it and I'll tell, point it out. Verse 37, when the people heard this, the big preaching that Peter had brought, he, he brought a good preach. And therefore, um, uh, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, I'm reading the wrong translation, sorry. Um, now, what, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Do the will of the Father, right? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. These two things, even though they're different things, they really are tied together. They, they really are inseparable. You know, I think it's I think it's interesting that with, you know, all of the other Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed are they which do a thing, okay, because they'll get a thing, right? But with this one, he said, here's two things that go together, right? Hungering and thirsting for righteousness because they are the people that will be filled. And even here on the day of Pentecost, when, when Peter stood up, and he taught, okay, he, he linked, you know, doing the will of the Father with the receiving of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. The two things cannot be separated. We need a penitent, repentance and obedience, and we need the Holy Spirit for newness of life. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I wasn't planning this, but I like it a lot. We read it a week or so ago. In verse 17, I'll start reading for time. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? We've received this ministry of reconciliation. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. He was reconciling this woman of Samaria to the Lord God. He was preaching to her. He was letting her know. Okay? And he was telling her the truth that she'd never heard, never met, and never experienced. Right? He said to his disciples straight after that, don't say that the fields are are not yet ready for harvest, okay? We're looking for workers to get out there and be about the Lord's business. We've received this ministry of reconciliation, okay? To wit, in verse 19, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, and pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he has made him to be sin for us, whom you know sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Newness of life, reconciliation to the God who created the universe, the one who cannot be looked upon by human eyes, and we will get to be with him and united with him, we will know him as he knows us. We will become entirely new creations, not limited by the flesh. We will rise in, it will be amazing. There'll never be a day after the Lord comes back, there'll never be a day where you say, you know what? This would have worked better if I still had the earthen vessel. You know, it's just not going to happen, all right? It talks about, Paul spoke about, if we truly understood that, that what was to come, we wouldn't be waiting about in this earth vessel. We'd be saying, get me out of this now. I just want to be there. He talked about it, you know, we, we wouldn't want to be a part of this, you know, life. And we have good times in this life. You know, we have nice things happen. We can go to places that are pretty or nice or whatever the case may be. We can go to a Thai restaurant and have a nice meal and just savour the flavours. Okay, hopefully that's what we're aiming for. Okay, we can have beautiful things happen with, for people that we love or with people that we love. We can have nice things and yet we are told it, it just doesn't compare to what's to come. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Actually, let's start in verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. The men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles, even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Or to understand that in another way, um, lychees, I don't like them. Do they grow on a tree? I hope they do, otherwise my entire example is going to fall apart. Whereas mangoes, are obviously a wonderful thing. A mango tree cannot bring forth lychees, okay? And a lychee tree cannot bring forth mangoes. They are different trees. Or another way of putting it, for the, you know, the carnal mind 
is at enmity with God. Or another way of putting it, it's impossible to please him. Okay? But we have to realise we're not that tree anymore. None of you is a lychee tree. Okay? And all the people said, with great rejoicing, praise the Lord, amen. Because who would want to be a lychee tree? Now, I don't know. Maybe if you get a fresh lychee, it's nice. I've only ever had one that came out of a tin or was at a Chinese restaurant somewhere when I was a kid. And it was, you have to remember, I grew up in Kyneton in the 1980s. We had, I think, three types of fruit. If you went to the supermarket, there was apples, there was oranges, no, four, bananas and pears. That was it. Okay, even mangoes only appeared in a 25% fruit juice drink that was mainly orange juice. Okay, so I'd seen pictures of mangoes and then I remember one day I got married and my wife brought a mango home and it was like, it's real, my goodness. But the reality is we're not lychee trees. We're just not anymore. One day you were a lychee tree. You couldn't produce anything other than lychees. And I don't know, maybe in your own strength, you tried to bring forth lychees that were like mangoes. And, 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 and they just weren't. You couldn't. But when you hungered and thirst for righteousness and you were filled, you were not a lychee tree anymore. You're a mango tree now. And mango trees go to heaven. And all the things <laughs> I tell you what, if this was being streamed, the entire Indian and Pakistani nations would just be logging on and agreeing with you. <laughs> they love it. Okay. So, we, do we believe this? Jesus said this. Yes. This is still the Sermon on the Mount here in Matthew chapter 7. Jesus said this. Do you believe you're filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. You don't need to believe. It's actually been confirmed and all the people said. That's the exciting bit. In which case, don't worry about the lychees anymore. Don't worry about the fruit that's not pleasing to God. You are no longer a corrupt tree. You are a good tree bringing forth spiritual fruit. Just don't worry about whether maybe sometimes you, you thought you were bringing forth a mango, but when you looked at it, it looked more like a lychee. We can tie our heads up in knots worrying about what we've been delivered from. When God wants us to praise him, for what he's made us and to walk in newness of life. Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. A couple of Psalms, don't turn them up. I delight to do thy will, O oh, oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. Who has the law written on the fleshy tablets of their heart? We do through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me in the, in the, uh, into the land of uprightness. Who gets taught by God? What teaches us all things? The spirit. Okay, we have what we need for salvation. Here we are, Ephesians chapter 6. All bunches of advice, be nice, do the right thing, it's all good. Okay? Not with eye service, uh, in verse 6, but as men pleases, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. We can worry a lot about, uh, how can I put this? Does your boss like you? Do you have a boss? If you've got a boss, does your boss appreciate you? 
Yeah, yeah Ian's kind of cleaning and cleaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay? Well, let me let you in on a secret. To your boss, you are only valuable as an employee if you're doing the job. And if you leave, they'll forget about you pretty quick. They'll replace you with someone else and you'll think I was special in that place. I made a difference. And then you'll go back not long after and I'll go, who are you again? All right? And I know this to be true. I, was work I worked at Warrigal Regional College for a dozen years. I had kids tell me that I was, you know, the bee's knees and they wanted me as a teacher and everything like that. Okay? And then I moved away. And then after a year, I went back because my, I, I actually took a uh, leave without pay for a year. So I didn't get to say, get my, my present. I wanted to watch, okay? And um, so I didn't get my present. I had to come back after a year when my leave without pay finished and, and go to work. And I walked in and I felt like a complete stranger. And there was all these new staff who, you know, had no idea who I was. And, and kids had forgotten, they'd moved on. They had new teachers that they were excited by or hated, depending on how they felt, all right? We are not special to the world, but we are special to God. And we have to be careful that just because your boss is a bit of a grouch who only cares about whether the job gets done and treats you like you're not valuable, okay, even though you're working unto your boss as unto the Lord, remember this again, you know, it might help. Um, right? <laughs> but the reality is, but if working unto your boss as unto the Lord doesn't please them, it doesn't matter. We're working for the Lord. We're working for the Lord. We're not a lychee tree anymore trying to make our way in the world by producing okay lychees. We are mangoes and we represent the master of mangoes, the Lord. This metaphor, I should leave it behind. <laughs> Let's leave the trees behind. But you get what I'm saying. Don't judge your worth to God by your worth to the world. Because Jesus said, they're not going to value you like they didn't value the prophets who came before you. Okay? Uh, let's go to verse 10. We'll keep reading from there. We'll read a few verses. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always in prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Our meat is to do the will of him who sent, him, who sent us. And our thirst is filled by the, the rivers of living water that flow from within us. And if we have those things, we read there multiple times, we will stand. Don't listen to the rest of the world. Don't listen to what it says about you. Don't listen to what it says about your worth. You're not that anymore. You are children of the living God. You hungered and you thirsted after righteousness. You have been filled, and all people said. Mm -hmm. We will leave.